quickly left when they were told to get, you know, what out of there uh, by ghosts. And they were not saying nice, kindly words. They were saying, get the ep out of here or you'll never get out. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that usually will get the, um, the seasons ones may, may stay, you know, but if somebody's new, they'll usually get, um, they get their hair standing up, usually get them running sometimes out of there, which probably is the best thing. Because I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes when you, you don't heed those warnings, that you will, they will lash out at you. Well, the Navy reviews a mystery between a huge 580-foot container vessel found drifting at sea. Again, there was nothing in there. The logbook was open. There was food and all that on the uh, dining room tables, but nobody on the ship. We're not talking about a small ship. We're talking a 580-foot container vessel. And this is off the UK here uh, a couple months ago. See, them's the those are the ones that really mystify me because there's no logical answer. I mean, where did the whole crew go? Were they abducted? Did they just uh, go hysterical and all jump off? I mean, it, it makes UFOs. no sense. UFOs. Maybe UFOs are abducting, you know, people off the ships. I mean, that would be a good way to get a uh, mass amount of people, especially if they were the kind that, you know, wanted to keep them forever or eat them or something. I mean, my goodness. I don't know. And then a, a guy claims with his digital camera he caught images of phantom soldiers on horseback. Oh, my goodness. I get, That reminds me of my trip to Gettysburg last year, phantom soldiers. My goodness, on Hospital Road in the middle of the night, <laughs> at about 11 at night, and uh, sitting there and and my friend was with me, and um, she pushes me out the door and says, go out there and get some EVP. So I go out there, and you can see, like, the mist coming across the road looked like the outline of soldiers. It was the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. So I'm out there trying to get these EVPs. So then I get back in the car, and uh, I look. She's got one of them cameras that shows behind the vehicle. And I looked down at it, and I could see them look like soldiers, but shaped like this mist coming right at the vehicle. And I said, oh, my God, look at the camera. She looked down there and floored it, about threw me in the back seat, and we was off. You know, it was like, oh. But I, I can still relate to that. Well, ghost hunters, you better watch out. At least if you're in the U.K., Scotland, and Ireland, you better watch out because this ghost hunter was fully clothed when he went into this old abandoned house. And somehow he gets stuck. And then, all of a sudden, he finds himself totally naked. <laughs> and, Sounds like he... and he couldn't find his clothes. He was there. And he had to, you know, open the door and, and, and draw people's attention. So, I do, have you ever heard of any ghosts actually basically tearing your clothes off of, of a ghost hunter? No. No, I've heard of, like, a succubus and an incubus having their way with people. But usually that's when they're in bed at night. I've never heard tell of tearing her clothes off. I wonder if he was drinking. <laughs> I'm just curious. That sounds bizarre there. I don't know. It was rather interesting. Now now it's your turn. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a, a something scary? Well, um, uh, there was a, a, a mom who was terrified, spine-chilling demon voice recorded on her phone in a hospital corridor. Now, she's in this hospital all alone going down this corridor. And I've heard several reports of this before, you know, across the country. Of, and that's another thing. Hospitals, you know, there's a lot of deaths in these hospitals. And, and this woman, um, she also seemed like what she thought was like the angel of death. And, you know, it was over this patient. It wasn't dead yet. And she kept returning to visit along with hearing this voice. And she's seeing this, this like angel of death, like hovering near this patient who hadn't died yet, you know. And uh, she was scared to death of it. And, she, of course, she's telling the nurses and stuff, but they don't see it, you know. Only she could see it. But and they kind of thinking she's crazy. So she didn't say nothing else. But she was she had nowhere to go. It kind of scared her because nobody believed her. And then the uh, patient died. And then, you know, she didn't see that figure no more. So I've heard several reports of that all through the country and within the last year, actually. Well, and you know. One. The also spirit boxes. I, I'm reading here that spirit boxes are very dangerous because they can actually possess you. So if you got a spirit box going and you're listening to it and you're thinking, oh, you're hearing all these ghosts and these demons and spirits, you better watch out because they can actually come through that spirit box and and then get into you. And, and I, Yes, 
I got to tell you, spirit boxes, I don't really care for them. I've never really used them. And and you do touch a good point because here's the thing. When you use a spirit box, you got to be very careful and know what you're doing. I wouldn't suggest just no uh, – if you don't know what you're doing, don't do it because, yeah, you can open things up and invite things in. You can open uh, portals or whatever, invite things into you inadvertently. Maybe you don't realize it. And they can be a dangerous tool, a lot like anything else. You've got to know what you're doing. I wouldn't just, if you've never used one or haven't read up on them or really studied them, I wouldn't just get one and go out there and just fire it up. But you're just asking for, you're opening yourself up for trouble. Well, no, you don't even have to go anywhere. You go buy one, right? You can buy them off of eBay. You can buy them off of Facebook, people that sell them. You, you can fire it up in your own living room, right? And, you know, and all of a sudden your house is now haunted. Because you opened up something you shouldn't have opened up. It's almost like a Ouija board, board only worse. It, it's actually, it's, it's a very good facsimile. It's pretty much like the modern day version of a Ouija board, really. I mean, any device that you're using, that you're using to communicate with the dead or spirits is basically, it's the same principle. It's like, um, you know, you got flat screen TVs today. Or you got rotary phones yesterday, and today you got cell phones. It's basically the same principle, and so it's like the new version of a Ouija board. You're right. Ah, dangerous. Hey, at the top of the hour, too, besides going on break, we're going to disconnect from Facebook Live. You can go and find us at www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. Dot com or just type in night dreams talk radio will pop up you know click on uh the link it'll take you to our website scroll down to the bottom of the website you'll see a player you'll see all our past shows and you can listen to any of the past shows that does, you don't have to join a club they're free to listen to but when we go live like right now it'll say we're live you can listen to us there you can go on to speaker radio and download uh, load their app uh, and listen to us live on there too. And actually you can even chat with us and Karen Banks, who's always on there, or you can go to iTunes, tune in, iHeartRadio and all the other apps and listen to us there. And depending on where you live, uh, you know, the stations that's carrying us, it's kind of sporadic right now. We're trying to fill in a lot of gaps, but again, you know, if you don't find us on your local band, you know, contact your local radio station and say, Hey, I'd like to have night dreams talk radio. Uh, you know, on your show, uh, a station. Anyway, you know, a man has a drone and he's flying it around over a cemetery and he captures ghosts. Yeah, that's a good, you know, drones can be used for that too. I, it's, I've i never tried it yet, but I got to tell you, that's a good way maybe to catch some evidence, even maybe even some Bigfoot or crypto stuff too with the drones. Oh yeah, I think it would be a good one too. And they're not that expensive anymore. No, and you can um, put, like, infrared cameras on them or whatnot. And especially in the fall and winter when there's less foliage and vegetation, you can see a lot more. I would think that would be a great – I would think that with the advent of a lot more drones and less expensive, more people getting them, that someday that we're going to get some good footage from a drone maybe uh, of a Bigfoot. But then again, you know, people will just say, well, it's just a man in a suit trying to pull a prank. So that's the problem with that. But anyway, hopefully – now, and again, over the UK, why is it always over the UK? A World <laughs> War II fighter plane is like doing everything in the air, at, you know, swoops and, you know, doing turns and all this stuff. And then it vanishes and they contact the control tower and they said, well, hey, it's nothing on radar. Nothing has been in the radar in that area. Yeah, I've heard several reports over the years of phantom uh, World War II planes, like the, uh, I forget what they call it, Spitfire maybe, but uh, of sightings and, and people hearing them, of phantom planes coming by from World War II era. And uh, again, there's just so much history in the UK, all dating clear back to the Romans, even way back before then, and a lot of death on that land. So you know there's a lot of spirits unrest there. They just got spirits going to be walking around there all over the place. They have to be. And I want to thank Donald Martin. He posted our link to our website uh, up on here on fa the Facebook uh, Live uh, connection. You know, again, out of the UK, a ghost train pulls into the station and picks up some passengers. And then it disappears and there's no trace of the train. And they think maybe it was from a parallel universe. Now that is some freaky stuff. And it's funny you mentioned that there's a, 
several instances instances of uh, parallel universe or people seeing different, like going into a shop in London or, or somewhere, and they come out, and it's a whole different time frame just for a few minutes or seconds or whatnot. And it's, uh, I would think if you'd come uh, across something like that, that would be really uh, freaky. I just think it would. Yeah, well, you know, Halloween is going to be coming up here shortly. So if anybody has any, you know, scary stories and stuff like that, I think the day or two before Halloween, I'll have open lines, give out some free books and all that stuff to the most scariest stories. Or I might just give them out to every caller calls up. I'll send them a free book. But you know what? Uh, if you ever seen something really that you can't really describe or you're scared to tell anybody about, you can certainly get a hold of us also at Night Dreams Talk Radio at gmail.com. And, you know, maybe we can have you a guest and you can talk about it, you know, just before Halloween. But could you imagine really creepy things that happen? You know, like all of a sudden there's a lady in line at the bank and there's people in front of her and people, you know, behind her. And she vanishes and everybody, you know, says to the teller, did you see what happened to that girl? But nobody could describe what she really looked like. Isn't that kind of strange that, that somebody's in line, you know, they're in line, they're in front of you and behind you, but they're all of a sudden gone. That reminds me of a story I heard and everybody's probably heard this, but well, you know, truckers occasionally would call in back here, you know, uh, when I had open lines and I remember this one a trucker told me a story. He was doing a long haul and he was on this lonely road, you know, not the freeway. He went the back way. And he saw this girl walking and he decided to pull over and help her because it was the middle of nowhere. It was late at night. The first thing he notices that she's wearing clothes like the late 50s, early 60s. And she gets in the cab and, you know, they're talking and he goes, uh, what happened? Well, my boyfriend and me, he got in a fight and he just dumped me off in the middle of nowhere and took off. And then they're, they're talking for maybe like 20 minutes. And he gives, you know, she gives him, you know, uh, the driver, uh, her name. And then, you know, he turns a head, uh, his head away for a few minutes, you know, paying attention more to the road. He looks over and she's gone. And he was really upset. So he, he, he goes up to uh, this little town. There's a cemetery there. And he goes to the police uh, station. He goes, I picked up this woman that was... A young girl dressed up in such and such. It looked like she's wearing stuff of the 50s and 60s. And her name is such and such. Is there anybody reported missing her like that? And they go, oh, here's another one. Yeah, she's in the cemetery, the block down. Yeah, there's a few stories like that. I know there's one uh, when I used to live on the East Coast. There was one out of, um, on uh, State Route 44 on Taunton, Rain of Massachusetts. There's always spotted a guy in a flannel shirt. He'd be hitchhiking, but he was he's not really a guy, he's a spirit. I don't know if he'd gotten killed on that road somewhere back in the fifties, I think it was, as the uh, I think the history of it. But he's been spotted several times, you know, walking along the road or trying to get a hitchhike a ride and some people would pull over to give him a ride and he'd just boom, disappear and then, you know, it kinda of shocks the people. I don't know. They still haven't caught who stole Winston uh, Churchill's golden toilet. Now, they, they have arrested some people, but they haven't got the toilet back. I'm just figuring what a toilet weighs if it was solid gold. You know, you're talking millions and millions of dollars just for something that a commode to sit on. You know, just to see it alone has probably got to weigh, my goodness, I'm going to guess probably 40, 50 pounds just the seat. I, I, could you imagine the whole base and the top? I mean, I don't know what style it was, but, yeah, you're talking – Depending on how thick it was, that that's a lot of weight. I, man, oh man, I, that's a lot of money. I got if it's solid gold, that's a lot of cash. Well, it's something. Well, anyway, we're going to be going on break here in a minute. You're listening to me, Gary, on Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. I want again I do a shout out to all the truckers that uh, listen to the show, listen to the downloads. So easy nowadays because if you have Bluetooth connection off of your phone, which most phones do, and if you have that on your stereo system, which most of them do, you can just sit there and downla- uh, download the show and then, you know, hit play. And there you are right into Night Dreams Talk Radio. And you can listen to, you know, any of our past shows, all, well over 300 of them at this point. That's a lot of shows, and there are good shows, too, and um, a lot of good listening. Oh, that is. 
So, you know, what can I say is that, again, you know, uh, I want to thank everybody that listens to the show because we have grown so fast here the last couple months. It, it's crazy. And, that, you know, we went from 